All right, everybody, today we're going to look at a new type of system, all right? You should be at this point comfortable with linear systems, two linear equations um, by graphing, by substitution, by elimination. We're going to look at one other type of system today, which is this one right here. Now, how is this different from what you've seen before? Well, hopefully you recognize that, yep, there's a linear right here. We know it's linear because there's just an x and a y, no squareds, no exponents, no strange exponents, nothing like that. So this is just going to be a linear right here. But the first equation right here, what kind of equation is that? You're right, it's a quadratic. So what we've got here is a quadratic system. All right, so we've got a linear and a quadratic together. So this is going to end up a little bit different from what we've been looking at before. You know, with lines, you could only have one solution or no solutions or infinitely many. Now, with the quadratic, there's also another possibility because, you know, if we kind of look at this, consider I could have a quadratic graph, see down here below my graph, and a linear graph, and I could end up with two possible solutions. And we'll talk about this a little bit more later, the amounts of different solutions that you can get, that kind of stuff. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and just see if we can work this one through. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start with the linear equation here just because that's going to be a little bit easier probably because I'm used to that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first. Now it's in standard form. And uh, I don't really like standard form because, as I tell my students, it's actually kind of pointless. So I'm going to rearrange it into slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So i got to get the y by itself. So I'm going to get rid of this 2x here. In order to do that, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And I'm going to have negative y because that minus is still there. 2x minus 2x is 0. 0 minus y is negative y equals, and then you can either go 2 minus 2x, or you know most people like to have the x first, so negative 2x, and then that'll be plus a, a 2 there. All right, so now we've got this. The y still isn't quite by itself. I still got a negative there, so we're going to take everything. This is technically a negative 1. You can divide everything by negative 1, or personally, I like multiplication, so I'm just going to multiply everything by negative 1. A negative 1 times a negative y will leave me with, of course, y. Negative 1 times negative 2x will give me a positive 2x. And then negative 1 times a positive 2 will give me a negative 2 or a minus 2. So I've now got y equals mx plus b. Remember, the first thing that we do is we have to have a point. We have to have a starting place. Without a starting place, the slope is unimportant. You cannot just start on the origin because that's what you feel like doing. You have to have a starting place. So we're going to start at b, which is the y-intercept, which is negative 2. So I'm going to put that point down. And then from there, my slope is 2, m is 2, so 2 over 1. So I'm going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. I'm going to do that as many times as I can. The more you do it, the more likely it is that you're going to end up with a good graph. Now I went up and to the right as much as I can. If I go down and to the left, you'll see that continues to give me the same slope essentially. So I'm going to go down to left 1. That gives me the same slope all the way along here. And so I'm going to go ahead and draw in my linear graph. You know, it's really important that you just take the extra couple of seconds to put all those points in because then it's clear where exactly that graph is going. Okay, now here's where it's going to get a little bit different. You've done this before. You've graphed quadratics. So really this isn't anything completely new. This is just putting together a whole bunch of ideas that you've done before. When it was two linear graphs, what did you do? Well, you drew one linear graph. And then you drew the other linear graph, and then you found out where they cross. Now remember, the whole point of that is because the line represents every single point. Not just the ones that I marked, but every single point on the line, it represents every single one of those points that could be put in for x and y. Every combination of x's and y's, which is an infinite number, you could put that in for x and y, and it would work in that equation. So now we're going to do the same thing for the quadratic so that we can find out which ones match up between the two equations. All right, so hopefully you'll remember a little bit about our good old days factoring and graphing quadratics. You'll remember that one of the first things that we did is we always looked for the vertex. Okay, now to start off with the vertex, we actually found the axis of symmetry. And we said we got the axis of symmetry from negative b over 2a. And remember, this is ax squared plus bx plus c. So negative b is going to be negative 8 
over 2 times a, a is the co coefficient in front of the x squared, so that's negative 2. And so I get negative 8 over negative 4, which is 2. So that's the axis of symmetry, which is 2 equals x. So here at 2, I'm going to put my axis of symmetry. Remember, which is just an invisible line going down the center of the graph. Okay, from there, I could take that number because the vertex is somewhere on this line, this axis of symmetry. So I can take that number 2 and put it back into the equation to find out what y value my vertex is at. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, okay, well, let's find the vertex now. And to get the vertex, I'm going to go negative 2 times 2 squared plus 8 times 2 minus 6, and that's equal to y. I should put the y over on the left-hand side. It's important that it's there. Please don't just write the quadratic because it won't always be y equals. So this is important that you, you're able to do that. So I go ahead and square the 2. So 2 times 4. 8 times 2 is 16 minus 6 equals y. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8 plus 16 minus 6. Negative 8 plus 16 is 8, minus 6 is 2, so y is 2. Remember, y is 2 when x is 2, because that's the number that I put in for x right there. So I've got x being 2, y being 2, which is 2, comma 2. And so that right there will be my vertex. All right, so I've got the vertex. What else did we look for when we were graphing a quadratic? We looked for the vertex axis of symmetry. We looked for the intercepts, right? So let's go y-intercept. Okay, so the y-intercept, remember, comes when x equals 0. So I'm going to say y equals negative 2 times 0 squared plus 8 times 0 minus 6. And some of you will remember that if a quadratic is in standard form, as this one was, ax squared plus bx plus c, that the y-intercept is always that last number because this will be 0, that will be 0, and so I'm left with a negative 6. So I can go ahead and put my y-intercept on. You may also remember that if I have a point with the axis of symmetry, I can reflect it over on the other side. So this is two spaces away. I'll reflect the other one two spaces away on the other side. So now I just need a couple more points. Remember, I also want the x-intercept. And hopefully you remember that we get the x-intercept by making y equal to 0. So I'm going to go 0 equals negative 2x squared plus 8x minus 6. So at this point, I'm going to try to solve for x. It is a quadratic. It is equal to 0. So I've got a couple of choices. I could do quadratic formula here. I could do uh, factoring. I personally like factoring. I think it's the easiest way to do quadratics. And so I'm going to factor. The first thing I'm going to look for is a common factor. Is there anything that goes into all of these numbers? And sure enough, 2 goes in. So I'm going to take out a 2. And you know what? I'm actually going to take out a negative 2 because I don't like having the negative coefficient in front of the x squared. So I'm going to take out a negative 2, which will leave me with an x squared. 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. Remember, when we take it out, we're dividing by that number. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. This leaves me with a nice trinomial here, which is going to be a little bit easier to factor. So I'm going to break it up into the two binomials. The first two numbers, remember, need to multiply together to give me x squared. The signs have to give me a positive, so either plus, plus, or minus, minus. I'm going to add them together later to, to kind of help get me that, so it's got to be minus, minus. A plus and a plus wouldn't give me a negative. So I'm going minus, minus, and to get 3, it's got to be 1 and 3. Now, to make sure that I've done this right, because maybe it's not factorable, so just to make sure, I'm going to go the inside. Negative 1 times x is negative 1x. And x times negative 3, which is negative 3x, I add those together, I get negative 4x. Remember, you should always do that because that double checks in case there's a coefficient in front. So negative 4x, that's what it should be right here, x squared minus 4x plus 3. So therefore, I factored it correctly. Once it's factored, remember, because you now have these things multiplied together to equal 0, then that means one of those things has to be 0, either negative 2 equals 0, or x minus 1 equals 0, or x minus 3 equals 0. Now, obviously, negative 2 can't equal 0. That doesn't make sense. Here, I add 1. So I got x equals 1. And here, I add 3, meaning that x is 3. Now, like I say, most of this should be review. I'm going to put these down as my x-intercepts uh, then. So x equals 1, x equals 3. I can go ahead and draw my graph in now, something like this. And 
something like that. And you can already see the two points where it crosses. We've got one right here and we've got one right here. So there are actually two solutions here. One of them, which is one comma zero, that's this one right here. And then I've also got this one, which happened to be the vertex in this case, so two comma two, just like that. So I've managed to find that by uh, graphing. All right. Of course, in order to check this, we should try both of those points in both of those equations. I'm not going to take the time to do that here because I think that's a fairly easy process and you've done that hundreds of times before. So in, in, in the interest of time and to not bore you out of your brain, I'm not going to go ahead and do that. But you can try it. You put in 1 for x, 0 for y. Do it in both equations and make sure that that actually works in both of them. That's the point. That's what we're trying to accomplish. The 2 comma 2, also you should be able to put in for x and y in both equations. And again, it should work. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to call a timeout. I'm going to pause the video because I want to show you how to do this uh, using another method, something other than uh, graphing. Because, yeah, graphing's nice. It's very visual. We can see the intersections there. But, you know, sometimes we just really don't like to graph. So hold on just a second. Timeout. Bloop. It's all gone just like magic. But I did leave the graph here so that we could see the solutions there and so we can check our work a little bit later. I want to show you that this actually works. All right, so now, substitution. The, again, this is nothing new. You've done this before. So I just want to show you how we can apply that idea that we already had. All right, so what we've got here is we've got our quadratic and linear. What was your first step in substitution? Do you remember when you had two linear equations, if you wanted to substitute, what did you do first? Hopefully you remember that you had to get one of those letters all by itself, right? The x or the y in either equation, didn't matter which equation, didn't matter which letter, the letter has to be isolated all by itself so that you can say this letter is the same thing as this stuff over here so you can substitute. Now, if you look at this very carefully, you'll note that y is already by itself. y is the same thing as negative 2x squared plus 8x minus 6. Those are equal. That means anywhere you see a y, you can replace it with this. Now, if you don't like that, you can always solve for y in the other one and put it in later in the other equation. But y is already by itself. Why do any more work? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this other equation, 2x minus y equals 2, and I'm going to write it exactly the way it is. But instead of y, I'm going to write negative 2x squared plus 8x minus 6. So there's a 2x. So I'm going to write the 2x. And then there's a minus. And then there's the y. Now remember, I'm substituting, so it should go in parentheses. Instead of y, I'm replacing it with this, because this is the same thing as y. Negative 2x squared plus 8x minus 6. So that was the y equals 2. So there's no magic here. I've written it exactly the same way that it was. There's your 2x. There's your minus. y is this, because y and that are the same thing, equals 2, just like it is there. Exact same equation. We just made a substitution because of two things that were equal. Now we just have to solve, right? So the first thing I've got to get rid of are the parentheses. So I'm going to distribute this minus to everything over here. So I'm going to have 2x. Negative times negative is positive, so plus 2x squared. Negative times 8x will be minus 8x. Negative times 6 would be plus 6 equals 2. Combine some like terms there. I've got 2x squared, 2x and negative 8x will give me minus 6x plus 6 equals 2. Now remember, when you're solving a quadratic, if you're going to factor, if you're going to use the quadratic formula, if you're going to do any of those things, you need it to be equal to 0. Because of the x squared and the x both being there, then you've got to do one of those two. You've got to either factor it or use quadratic formula. You can't just isolate the x. It becomes too difficult because of the x, unless you learn a different process called completing the square, in which case you can do it. But we're not quite, we don't have the time to, to really do that this year. So I need this equal to 0. So to make it equal to 0, I'm going to subtract 2 on each side. And I'm left with 2x squared minus 6x plus 4 equals 0. So from here, I'm going to solve it. Last time I factored, this time, ah, uh, what the heck? Why don't we do a uh, quadratic formula? So ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. a is 2, b is negative 6, c is 4. Quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. 
one of the many formulae. So x equals negative, and then b was negative 6. Got to remember both those negatives, plus or minus. Square root of b squared minus 4 times a, which was 2, times c, which was 4, all over 2 times a, which was 2 again. So I work that out. Negative, negative 6 will be positive 6, plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared is 36, because negative 6 times negative 6 is a, a positive. Uh, 4 times 2 is 8, times 4 is 32, so minus 32 all over 4, which then is equal to 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 32 is 4 all over 4. And so 6 plus or minus 2, because the square root of 4 is 2. And so therefore I end up with 6 plus 2 over 4 and 6 minus 2 over 4. 6 plus 2 is 8 divided by 4 is 2. 6 minus 2 is 4 divided by 4 is 1. So that means x can be 2 or 1. Now I need to get the y value. Remember, this was all that first step of substitution. It's going to be a little bit longer because you've got to solve now. This, my friends, is why I like factoring because I could have factored that in less time the quadratic formula. But I just wanted to make sure that you knew how to get the, the, the quadratic formula. So these are for x. We've got x by itself now, right? We now know that x can be 2. If x is 2, remember once you got one variable, you just put it back into one of the other equations. It doesn't matter which one. You can put it into whichever one you want. If you want the top one, top one is a quadratic, but it's already solved for y. Bottom one's a little easier to work with, but then you've got to do some rearrange. It's totally up to you. I'm just going to put it in the top one because I'm not scared of quadratics. So I'm going to put 2 in for x. So 2 squared plus 8 times 2 minus 6. And so negative 2 times 4 plus 16 minus 6. So negative 8 plus 16 minus 6. That looks familiar. Negative 8 plus 16 is uh, 8 minus 6 is 2. So when x was 2, y is 2. And then we also have to put in the x equals 1 because there's two possibilities for x. So I'm going to go negative 2 times 1 squared plus 8 times 1 minus 6. Again, I could have put those numbers into the second equation, the linear one. It doesn't really matter. So 1 squared is 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 plus 8 minus 6. Negative 2 plus 8 is 6 minus 6, y equals 0. So therefore, when x was 1, y is 0. You'll note that I got exactly the same points as I did when I graphed it. This is through substitution. You now know how to solve a linear quadratic system through substitution and through graphing. Unfortunately, the elimination is going to become significantly more difficult. Therefore, we're not going to cover that. Some situations it's doable, but it's not really worth the pain because as we get into more and more difficult uh, types of functions, you'll note that sometimes elimination just is really, really, really not the best option. So substitution will always work just the way that we used it. And graphing, of course, is all, always works. It's very visual. It's just sometimes it's a little bit uh, nasty in the, in the graphing part of it. All right. Well, you know what? That is it. We are done. And uh, hopefully that's helpful as you try some of your own.